If you want to self-host your Git repositories, then you are in the right place. In this video, I'm going to show you how to easily install a Git server on a Raspberry Pi where you can self-host your own Git repositories using a service called Gitty. Gitty has all the features you'd want from a Git server, such as GitHub, but with the ability to easily host it locally yourself. I think there are many reasons why you might want to self-host your Git repositories. Maybe you would prefer to keep some of your personal projects actually private and not hosted somewhere in the cloud, or perhaps you just want to host more of the services that you use often. GitLab is also a popular choice to self-host your Git repositories, but it consumes considerably more resources than Gitty, so it's maybe not the best choice to self-host on a Raspberry Pi. Gitty can be run on a Raspberry Pi 3 for light workloads, but I'm going to use it on a Raspberry Pi 4, and that's probably where you're going to get the best experience. Okay, so we're going to use Docker Compose to install Gitty. I am SSH'd into my Raspberry Pi 4, which is running a pretty much clean install of Raspbian Lite, and I've set the host name of this Pi to example Pi, but you can use the IP address of your Raspberry Pi if you want, it'll make no difference in this tutorial. All of the commands I use here will be listed on an article on my website linked in the video description. So, firstly, I need to install Docker. If you already have Docker and Docker Compose up and running, then skip this chapter using the timestamps. We can install Docker using the Docker install script. We download this script from get.docker.com using the curl command, and then we run it. It is always advisable that you check what the script is doing before you run it, especially as sudo. Once installed, we're going to want to add our current user to the Docker group using the user mod command so that we can use Docker commands without having to be the root user or sudoing. Log out and log back in to apply these changes. To check Docker is installed, we can check the version using docker dash dash version and Docker Compose should also be installed with this script and we can check that using docker compose version. Now I'm going to create a directory to store our docker compose file and all the other files that the containers will need. Simply create a docker-compose.yml file and paste the following into it. If you already have a docker compose file up and running, then paste everything from the server colon line into your docker compose file, but also ensure that you create the Gitty network. If you have multiple services, then check that your ports are not conflicting. And also ensure that the user and group ID matches the user that is going to be running the container. In this case, that is my Pi user that I added to the Docker group. If you don't know what your user and group ID are, then you can run the command using id-u and the username of your account, and for the group, replace -u with -g. We can now save and exit the docker compose.yml file. If we use docker compose up dash dash detach, then this command will pull the Gitty image and start the container in the background. If we want the containers to start when the Pi does, in case it fails or something like that, then we use the command sudo systemctl enable docker. Now we can open Gitty. In your web browser, simply navigate to your Raspberry Pi IP address or hostname, followed by the port that you set in the docker compose file. In my case, that was port 3000. And you should now be greeted with a setup page. Most of the defaults here are going to be okay but there are a few things to note as we go through it. Firstly, we need to configure the database. The database is where Gitty stores all its information, and there are a couple of options, but if you want an easy out-of-the-box experience, then I suggest using SQLite. If you start using Gitty for, for larger projects with many concurrent connections, maybe if you're in a small business or something like that, then it might be worth looking into other database options. We can change the name of the Gitty site if you would like, and then we can check that the auto field values are correct. You can leave the username as git. If you experience issues with accessing the site if you've used a hostname rather than IP address, then you can change the server domain from the hostname of the Pi to the actual IP address. Make sure that the ports match those that you set in the Docker Compose file. In optional settings, we can configure Gitty's access to an email server, which will allow it to send users emails. But if you don't want or need this, then you can leave it blank. Then under administrator account settings, we create an admin user account. 
Once complete, hit Install Gitty and give it a few moments to complete the setup. Once done, you'll be logged in as your admin user. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new user, which is the one I will use day to day, and this user won't have admin privileges. This is just good practice, but not necessarily mandatory. To do this, hover over your user account in the top corner and then go to Site Settings. Under Identity and Access, you can go to User Accounts and then create a new user. I will then use this new user to sign into Gitty and this will be the one I upload my repos with and so on. Now, at this stage, you should have a fully configured Gitty service, which looks and feels a lot like GitHub, which is actually quite helpful and reduces the learning curve. So we're going to now make a repository and demonstrate how to push your code to it. To create a new repository, click the plus on the top, the plus icon on the top right. Give it a name and a description if you want. You can also adjust other repository settings here, but I'll leave this as is for now. And then hit create the repository. Now on my local computer, I'm going to create a repository and push it to the Gitty server. And I'm going to use a template project, uh, an RP2040 template project as a base for this. In a terminal on my local computer, I'm going to navigate to the project I want to push to my Gitty server. Then we need to create the Git repository on the local machine with Git in it. Then we need to add all the files in the folder with git add dot. Then we can commit these changes with git commit. Then we need to link to our remote repository, which we can do with the command git remote add origin, and then the link to our Gitty repository. This link is available on Gitty. Then we can push these changes by using the push command. At this stage, you will most likely be asked for credentials and enter the username and password of the Gitty user you created earlier. The user account though, if you created one and not the admin account. Now, if we go back to our Gitty webpage and refresh the repository, you can see that all of our files are added here. So now you have a fully functioning, self-hosted Git server that you can experiment with and use to host your projects. It has features like pull requests, issue tracking and so on that you can play around with, especially if you have other people working on projects with you. I hope that you found this tutorial interesting and helpful. If you have, then please make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing for more just like this. If you have any suggestions for upcoming videos, then make sure to leave a comment down below. Thank you very much for watching and as always, have a nice day.